Welcome. This will be a demonstration of a tub to shower conversion. Uh, we'll take the fiberglass tub shower unit and convert it over to an onyx collection shower base and wall system. Video is going to be very general. We're just going to go through the basic steps of the remodel. And uh, there's going to be a lot of details missed, but they can be filled in through the instruction sheets that do come with the Onyx collection materials. Uh, we're going to begin the project by tearing out the fiberglass tub shower and removing all the plumbing fixtures. And once everything's removed, we're going to make sure the floor is level and firm. And we're going to repair any of the plumbing fixtures as needed. Repair the wall as well. And once everything is prepared, We'll set the shower vase, install the wall panels and all the accessories, and then we'll finish off with the shower door. Fiberglass tub has been removed. Uh, the next step is to redo the plumbing. We're going to switch the plumbing over from the, uh, the tub plumbing unit to a shower uh, plumbing setup. Got the control valve and the shower head. Uh, it's, it's pretty good to get the shower head high. Uh, it seems to be the most comfortable setup. That's one important little point there. As far as the drain, a tub generally takes an inch and a half drain pipe. Your, your shower will require a two inch drain pipe so take out the old inch and a half drain pipe and replace it with a two inch pipe. Uh, also important at this step is to take a look at the subfloor. The subfloor must be level and also solid. Uh, the old subfloor did have a little water damage so there was some flex so we did replace the subfloor. Uh, checking it for level, the subfloor was level so we didn't have to um, raise or shim anywhere. Uh, once the plumbing and the subfloor is taken care of, the next step will be to set the shower base into place. Before installing the shower base, we, we went ahead and installed the shower drain onto the base. Uh, one important point for the shower drain is you do want to get a good silicone seal in between the shower drain and the base. Uh, we do include silicone with every shower base, so please use the adhesive silicone that comes with the base. Also, for glueless shower drains, uh, it's a lot easier removing the, uh, the rubber gasket and the, the tightening nut from the drain before installing the base. So an easy method is simply to put one end of the shower base into a corner and then swing the other end in. So, so it's not necessary, but uh, I, I do like to do it just to take up any variation in the floor. We will put a couple dabs of silicone underneath the base, but uh, it's, it certainly isn't necessary, but is helpful at times. So once the silicone's down, uh, is simply set the shower base down into place. The one one thing that is important when setting the shower base, we will have to line up the drain with the, uh, the pipe and we'll just watch that as we go down here. Okay. 
After the base is set, uh, we'll go ahead and put in the, the gasket and the, and the tightening nut. And the gasket simply goes around the pipe, slips right down in between the pipe and the drain. And just tighten down the nut. The shower base is set, and the next step is to install the wall board. Wall board can either be sheetrock, hardy backer board, concrete board, pretty much any wall board system is fine to use. Uh, I, I do recommend throwing a coat of primer paint on the wall board. The primer paint simply seals up any dusty nature of the wall board. It also gives the silicone a good uh, surface to adhere to. So once the wall board is up, then the next step is to install the wall panels, the shower wall panels. Now these wall panels are going to go up to the ceiling. We're going to hold the, be able to hold the wall panels down a few inches because the top will be finished off with crown molding, uh, kind of a cap style crown molding, which the wall panel will be able to slip underneath. First step is to install the back wall panel. and Simply measure left to right and double check your side walls to see if they're plumb. And uh, you will need to leave a little gap on each wall side. The gap is for a very small expansion contraction that may happen as the shower warms up and cools down. And also don't worry about the gap because the side shower wall panels will butt into the back panel and cover any gap that's there. So. Measure up the back panel, double check your side walls for plumb, make sure everything's going to fit fine, and then we'll bring in the wall panel and install it. So the panel's been cut to size and brought in. We also wiped off the back of the panel with a moist cloth to make sure there's no dust in the back of the panel. And do the same to the wall, make sure the wall is you know, clean. And also down on the base where the panel will set. Just make sure that is cleaned up. Once everything's cleaned, ready to go in, we go ahead and put silicone on the back of the panel. Now with silicone, we want to run small circles every eight inches throughout the entire panel, and then we'll go ahead and put it in place. Once the silicone is on the back of the panel, we also want to run a little bead right along the edges, about an inch from the uh, inch from the wall, and then we're going to go ahead and pick up the panel and put it into place. Okay. You want to lean, lean your end out? There we go. Alright, once the back panel is installed, uh, then we're just going to install the, the, the side panels. We begin with the, uh, the right panel here. Uh, setting it into place, i double check how it's going to line up with the back panel. You can see how this side panel when it rests flat on the bottom, uh, the back wall does have a bow. It, it, the, the back wall is leaning in. And so what we're going to have to do is scribe the side panel and cut it to fit against the back panel. Now that's not that hard, just scribing the line. Onyx panels cut with regular wood cutting tools. So just with a regular circular saw or jigsaw will make the cut. And we may have to fine tune it with a belt sander. But uh, we'll go ahead and set this in place and scribe, scribe a line and then uh, we'll go out and cut it. So 
we brought the panel out to the garage and we'll, we'll do the cutting out here. Remember onyx wall panels cut with regular wood cutting tools. It's kind of an older circular saw here but just a regular wood cutting blade on there. Um, went ahead and put some tape down to protect the onyx surface. You can cut from the front side or the back side of the onyx panel. If you cut from the front side, the finished side, you do want to protect the surface, make sure it doesn't get scratched. So we put the tape along our mark line here and we'll just go ahead and cut it right on off. panels cut bring it in just double check the fit we want a nice tight seam there uh, I would say maybe a sixteenth of an inch is acceptable up to about an eighth uh, but but you do want a nice tight seam all the way top to bottom so once you like it then we're gonna go ahead and clean everything up wipe all the dust off put some silicone on the back of the panel and stick it to the wall we have the silicone on the side panel here so we're just gonna set it in place Run it up against the back panel. Next is going to be the plumbing wall shower panel. And we're going to go ahead and size the panel approximately, get it close, and then also put our hole in for the shower control valve and the shower head. And when, when we do that, we'll go ahead and put it in place, see if we have any fine tune adjustments and then we'll make those after. Uh, so we'll take our measurements and then go out in the garage and then cut the panel and bring it on in. Cut all the, the holes in this panel, sized it to fit, we have the silicone on it, we're going to go ahead and set it right in place and adhere it to the wall. And one tip to help the panel stick to the wall a little bit better, a little bit faster, is once you have the panel pressed up against the wall, is to pull it Pull it back away and let some air get to that silicone. Let some air get to the silicone. You can see how the little circles will act like suction cups. And that's, that's the importance of the circle part of the silicone. So let a little air get to that and that'll speed up the cure of the silicone so that when we do press it back, it'll stick that much faster. Okay, so the, all the panels are installed, and next step is to do the crown molding. We have one corner block in this corner. I'm going to set the other corner block up here and put the crown molding in the center and on the sides. Crown molding block, pretty simple installation. We have a little angle bracket screwed into the uh, set in the corner, and then it rests, the, the quarter block rests right on top of that angle bracket. And then you can silicone it into place before you set it up there, or just wait to install everything and then color match it in. Either way, it should hold just fine. So we'll go ahead and take our measurement and go out and cut the other crown molding after we install our brackets here. So we cut the crown molding to size. We already installed the back piece. Go ahead and install the side piece. We're just going to put a little bit of silicone up right in the corner just so it has something to stick to once it's up there. It doesn't take much. And remember we're just going to slip the crown molding right over top the brackets. See how the cap caps the panel? And it's installed right up tight. And then at the end we'll color match 
in between the onyx crown molding and the onyx panel and then we'll use painter's caulk, a very small bead, right where it meets the ceiling. This is a tall diamond corner caddy. Uh, we're going to hang it in the corner. This is a little corner bracket. See the little bevel on the end? It'll catch on the back side of this top shelf. So we'll, we'll mark our holes, and I already have one drilled. Mount our bracket, and then we'll set the caddy up on top with a little piece of silicone behind it. Tape the caddy up until that silicone cures. Then we'll color match around it and the caddy will be installed. Okay. Brackets installed, so we have silicone on the back of the caddy. And we're just going to rest the caddy on the bracket and gently slip it into the corner. Rest in place. Shouldn't go anywhere, but taping it in place is a good little safety precaution. So we'll go ahead and tape it right on in place here. Next step, we're going to install a recess caddy. Now, the recess caddy will actually cut a hole into the back panel using this as our template, and then the recess caddy will fit into the hole, and then we'll silicone around to seal it in place. Now, it's important to know where your studs are, and we do have a stud approximately right here and right here. So before you get to this point where you install the back panel, measure for the studs. If you know approximately where the stud is, you can cut a small hole, measure over to your stud, and place the template in the right place accordingly. You just have to know approximately where your studs are to know where to cut the hole. So we'll go ahead and cut a hole right here, measure over to our stud, get the exact location, and then mark out the template. The template marked out, and then we put blue tape around to protect the onyx panel from the jigsaw. And we'll just start here and go to the four corners and cut it on out. So we have the cutout for the recess caddy made, and we silicone around the edge of the recess caddy, and we'll just rest it on in there. And once again, tape it in place. One important note is to make sure it's level. So, you can go to the top or bottom, and you want to make sure that it's level. If any silicone comes out, have a bottle of rubbing alcohol, and simply spray it, and then use a paper towel to wipe it off. The rubbing alcohol will help the silicone uh, to keep from smearing. So.
Last step after all the caddies have been installed is to put on a color match silicone on all the seams. Uh, we have already got the color match up top and around the caddies and down below. Save this one just for the last shot here. So the color match silicone seals up all the seams so that no water can get through. It's very important that the seam is clean before the silicone is applied. To apply the silicone, go a very small portion off the tip of the silicone and just run a bead, a very small bead, right into the corner. Have a paper towel. This is my technique, paper towel with a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol. Just moisten the paper towel, get your finger moist, and just run until it starts building up. And then just simply pull the silicone off and wipe it off and begin again. That'll get you very nice. Today we will install a fully frameless shower door. Uh, the shower door will have a fixed panel on this wall and then have a door which will hinge off of the wall over here. A couple quick notes at the beginning is it's best to have your walls as plumb as possible and also on your hinge wall to have wood backing in the wall to support the hinges. And, uh, We'll go ahead and start by opening up the boxes and we'll install the side panel first. We'll go ahead and start with the door installation. Uh, there's a few different ways to do it. You can install the door first and then put the side panel up. Uh, we will install the side panel first and dry fit it. And once that's in place, we'll go ahead and line up the shower door, the hinge door. The reason for starting with the side panel first and then moving on to the door is to make sure we have them both lined up. So to start with the side panel, the first step is to determine where your bottom track will be. Uh, you just want to make sure you have it far enough inside so that when the hinge is lined up, it's not going to extend past the front of the shower. So I went ahead and made a mark here and a mark here. I'm going to go ahead and just tape this channel in place. Once the channel's been taped in place, we'll go ahead and put the side jam up and make sure it's plumb and then we'll mark the holes. After the holes are marked, we're just going to pre-drill a quarter inch hole through the onyx wall panels. After the holes are drilled, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom channel and clean off the curb track. And the bottom channel has a very high strength, clear, waterproof double stick tape on it. And that's what will hold it in place. So remove the backing and be very careful because once it's set, the double stick tape will hold it in place and won't be able to remove it. You got to make sure it goes down in just the right spot. The bottom track is set in place, we're going to go ahead and attach the top track to the wall. Go ahead and get the screws started. Once the side jam is installed and attached to the wall, Start with the large setting blocks. Just put a couple 
of them in the track and set the glass panel and then move it move it over into the uh, wall channel side panel has been installed, it's dry fitted so it's not permanently installed with the silicone yet and we're going to go ahead and measure up for the door and, and put the door in. Now the doors are normally 28 inches wide and with a 28 inch wide door that's the glass size and you do want a gap on your hinge side and also a gap in between the side panel. Now normally there's a quarter inch gap in between the door and the wall and then there's about a quarter inch gap between the door and the side panel so with a 28 inch piece of glass for the door and a quarter inch and a quarter inch gap it should be about a 28 and a half inch opening and we're right at about 28 and three quarter but we do have the flexibility to adjust and pull out the glass so we're okay for now we're going to go ahead and put the hinges on the door and then set the door in place mark the holes for the hinges and then pre-drill and then screw the hinges into the wall with the door on it Okay, lay out the door on a flat surface and uh, go ahead and install, attach the hinges to the door. There's going to be different black vinyls, uh, little gaskets. Uh, take the thinner ones, set them aside, and you want to use the thicker ones for the 3 8 glass. Uh, set the hinge inside the notch, locate the rubber, set the plate on top, and simply tighten the screws. With the door in place, we have the setting blocks down, the half inch tall setting blocks. Our next step is to line up the door down at the bottom. Make sure our, our distance from the front of the curb is consistent all the way across. So the door is in line with the side panel. And we want it to be in line with the side panel all the way up to the top. Once everything is lined up, we'll go ahead and mark for the drilling of the holes for the hinges. And then we'll remove the glass and then drill the holes and then mount the door. Okay, so the holes are now drilled for the hinges. We went ahead and moved the side panel off to the side for a moment just to give us better access. Uh, once the holes are drilled, we set the door in place. Just going to take the the hinge screws and go ahead and attach the hinges to the wall. So the door has been fastened to the wall, the screws have been tightened, and then also the Allen screws on the hinges have also been tightened, and the door is in place. And we also made sure that the door was plumb on the end here. So once that is all finished, go ahead and open the door out of the way and set the side panel back in the track and then we'll position that correctly. When you go to set the side panel back in the track, make sure your setting blocks are still in the side panel. Using, using the spacers that come with the shower door, we, we, we kept resetting the glass until the glass was in, in line and level with the shower door and the gap was consistent all the way top to bottom. So at this point what we will do is we'll keep our spacers intact down on the track, we'll remove the shower door and we'll put dabs of silicone along the tracks and then we'll set the glass back in. That silicone will hold the glass in place. Once we have the glass back in, then we'll, our final step 
will be to run a bead of silicone down the channel in between the channel and the glass to seal up the glass channel. So we'll go ahead and remove the glass now and put our dabs of silicone in. So we put silicone in the track and set the glass panel into the track. Make sure it's still lined up well with the door. Flat up top and also the consistent gap. At this point, it's kind of the final sealing. We'll run a bead of silicone between the channel and the glass. A very small bead, but that'll keep the water from going inside the channel. After the panel's been siliconed in, pretty much there's a couple more steps. Next one would be installing the handle and then assemble it through the glass and uh, connect the inside part of the handle to the screws and then tighten the Allen screws. After the handle is installed, the next step is to install the vinyl drip sweep on the bottom of the door. Just simply put the drip sweep onto the bottom end of the door, snap it into place. And the door should open and close freely. Final step to help seal up the shower. Now remember we, we have a gap in between the shower door and the side panel and also a gap between the door and the wall. If a lot of water will be splashing and hitting these gaps, you may want to use one of our vinyl seals. We have a bubble vinyl, which is a very small bubble vinyl, generally gets put on the side panel. Or we have a T-vinyl, which is a larger vinyl for larger gaps. Often that can be used on the wall side, especially if a wall is a little bit out of plumb and your gap is a little larger in places. So that completes the shower door installation video. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call us at the office collection. Thank you.